<clears throat> on the YouTube to have a site here. And we are going to go over another disappointing uh, very disappointing case that I believe you know that it was a failed poor investigation and mind you they went on in informants uh you know, confession, but still could not gather enough evidence towards two men. And the case still remains unsolved. Of course, my wife found this article yesterday, so I had to dive into this one because, yes, it is. <laughs> and, and it's not surprising. It's not surprising. Poor investigation, I believe. And I'm sorry. I am, you know, whatever. Not sorry. You, you can't just grab two guys off the street. You know, in, insufficient evidence. And I believe maybe there's more to this story because I can guarantee there's probably evidence that was lost, discarded, because back in 1978, you know, but even now, <laughs> you know what? It's not surprising where it's coming from either. Whatever. It is what it is. And I, I'm just baffled of this story because they had two men. They had a well enough known um, uh, uh, well, there's two theories that I can come up with. It's thoughts, theory, idea. And I don't know. This is the girl that was murdered. Her name is Marianne Higginbotham. Higginbotham. Jesus Christ, I wonder if that's English. But, I don't know, maybe, I think there's more, the two stories of this. And... I think maybe the boyfriend was involved because his body's never been found, but it does make sense in this article of him, you know, being moved as a dead body. But still, I, oh man. And there's so much stuff wrapped around this case to say, you know, and I would believe that there would have been, you know, more DNA searching, especially today, because this article is from 2016, and a new article came up, I guess, you know, a couple days ago. This was uh, December 15, 2016. So the story goes is that this girl and her boyfriend, which, mind you, the boyfriend had a, you know, probably a 50-page track record of not being a good boy. He was a bad boy, always getting in trouble. And for some reason, you know, not all women, but some women like to go towards that bad boy, uh, you know, look, the feeling they get from it. Probably the exhilaration of, you know, their, whatever the hell they're thinking, fueled by their bad boy personality. And this, this girl, right, got caught up in the wrong situation and ended up dead. Shot in the back of the head. 
of course. But there was uh, supposedly there was a ring going on, stealing, stolen, yeah, stealing, or you know, probably a bunch of guys stealing. I would consider it a chop shop, which is very. And this, you know, they were talking about how this sleazy detective magazine with the headline, Who Killed the Blonde in the Barrel? You know, they, it, it, yeah, see, with some things out in Indiana said, done, and looked at, I'm sorry, man, but it's, you guys ain't got a good reputation out there, especially with the Delphi murders, huh? They got a 1978 story here. Oh, yeah, I think I said 79. It was 78, excuse me. And you have a updated story, and here we have a killer, you know, but lack of evidence. Don't run all the DNA thoroughly. And you still got them running around. One one killer is deceased, I guess. And I hope, I hope they were smart enough to keep a DNA sample from the guy. But only time will tell. And who knows what's left over for evidence in this case, but whatever. And I'm I'm sorry, but it's I can't be sorry. Why do I keep saying I'm sorry? This is a poor investigation to me. And this these articles that I've read so far all cover coat everything. Don't care what you think or say. I would have been I would have done something different. <laughs> Especially keeping all the evidence that they had found, which was uh, I wanted to just skip right through. There it is. Simply isn't enough sufficient evidence to proceed forward with a case. She was discovered a year later. Tim Willoughby was never found. Tim may have had something to do with it. But four years later, in the 1983 Hendricks County Prosecutor's Office, brought charges against two men. But I still think he could have had something to do with it. Thoughts, theories, ideas coming up. Car theft ring. Chop shops. And Tim wanted money because I guess this kid probably stole cars and brought them to him. And talking about someone record show that an informant told police known details about suspects. He wanted money. Now, I mean, in a way, this kind of sounds, you know, cheesy in a way. Because why would you put yourself at risk to say, oh, I want money, I'm going to rat these people out? I mean, whether or not he had involvement in it, which maybe, and that's one of my thoughts, there's ideas he could have been involved. Mr. Track Record wasn't clean with criminal history. So, yeah. Not the two people plotted to kill. An informant believed that had first-hand knowledge of the crimes. The two men confessed to the crime and that she was forced to clean their bloody clothes. Obviously, because they killed Tim first. Key details about the crime. The guy had key details including that she had been possession of Marion. Oh, this is another lady. What the hell? Oh, this is the informant. So the informant cleaned the clothes. Yeah, the informant had details. And in possession of Mary Ann, her rings, and that Mary of them had been washed and removed of any traces of evidence. So if she had rings, and that would have been the top key evidence right there. Yeah, 
Despite additional information that the two suspects may have removed Tim's body from a barrel upon learning the discovery of Mary, charges against them, men were later dropped due to insufficient evidence. So if you got an informant here, cleaning bloody clothes, key details about the crime, and had rings. Now, whether or not these rings were brought forth, whether or not there was no um, search warrant to grab all these, these two pieces of crap's clothes and, you know, kept to see if any trace of blood was washed, is the question, the main question. And that's the first thing I would have done as a detective. Screw this crap about, oh, you need a lot of more evidence. You know what, if someone has that information and, you know, this laws need to be changed, I would have been, boom, right on in there with the friggin', you know, warrant. Get them closed. If you have nothing to hide, you should be able to do it, you know, you. If you don't have nothing to hide, you should be able to hand over your evidence that they want with no problem. And that's right there is what should be the key main thing of a case. And, you know, getting a warrant with, oh, you know, they always say, right, you got to have a good, probable cause to get that warrant. Well, if someone don't have nothing to hide, then they shouldn't have no problem handing over something. And later on, hey... It should be in writing that if they find nothing, hey, sue the city because anybody else would do it anyways. It gets done anyways. Sue the city. We'll pay you for, you know, harassment charge. Uh, you know, yeah, harassment, you know, stuff. That That's what should be put in the law books. Who cares if the city's got to pay a sue lawsuit? You know, if, that, if you can get a killer by doing it that way, then God damn it, do it that way. And pay the money. Or we'll just pay you to shut you up. Because they're only anybody in the case anyways. If this case, you know, they did find them not guilty. And if they did not get all the evidence and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, line it up with them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they sue later on anyways. Either way. Because all the damn stupid, you know. And obviously they didn't sue because they did have something to hide. But, you know. Something, an idea needs to come up to make things get done better to find out more information and get more evidence. They have a move, and then it goes on to say... And this guy right here, he couldn't remember all the details of the case, but did say fully trust information story, and he didn't feel strongly enough about the case to move forward to trial. You know what? Poor, poor judgment. I would have brought that forth, and if I was an investigator, I would have went and hunted more stuff down. You see, this is the thing... A lot of detectives don't expand their mind. And a lot of people, when they read these articles, they don't expand their minds. They don't go further and to think of other, you know, thoughts, theories, ideas. They just stick with the one thing that is written, and that's it. You can't move forward. They just saw what they say. You can't move forward with more ideas. You can't think that. You know, that's a lot of people come attacking me about because, you know, whether or not my stuff is realistic, just thoughts, theories, ideas, that's all this channel is. When I do my crimes, stories, thoughts, theories, ideas. I'm not here to alter cases, ruin cases. I'm not here to lead people down the wrong path. I'm just here to talk about and lead people to think of other things rather than what's written in this article because it's bogus, it's bullshit, and it's bad investigating. And here we are. Actually, the, you know, this is 2016. It's going on 44 years now. 
So I might do a little more on this. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I'll do a mapping or something, but once again, Indiana. <laughs> what what's wrong with you? Some, not all. Don't take it personally out there, Ellie. Not all LE is bad. I will not downgrade all law enforcement. There's a lot of good ones out there. But this case, I think it was poorly done. Just like poorly done with the Delphi murders. And look at that, 78, 2017. Bad, bad decisions made back then. You know, just all around insanely done wrong. Now, my thoughts and theories that could have been with the boyfriend, I would say this is only two that I think of. One, he was involved with the guys. Um, would think this girl would have done and said something, threatened him to kill her, and get the hell out of town. They didn't want him no more because of bringing a, a person on the outside of a ring that, you know, on, you know, realistically, this girl was probably, you know, if pictures, it says a thousand words to me and she didn't look like no criminal. She just looked like that type of girl that wanted the bad boy type. And right, got up in the wrong <laughs> part of town and because this guy brought her into the ring because, oh, he falls in love with her or whatever he's going to do with her. Or he just used her just to get in bed with her, blah, blah, blah. He brought her to the wrong place at the wrong time to be even looked at as, you know, what do you got this person here for? What are you, stupid? Bringing it up in our operation. Now get rid of her. And he could have been a little bit, of, oh, she going to say nothing. You get out of town or we're going to kill you next or you better kill her or we're gonna kill you so what i think he could have done was killed her but didn't want to get caught didn't want no more to do with this and got out of town or the other scenario is right what i don't believe he's gonna rat nobody out but i believe he saw something he should have been not seeing if he's not in, you know involved with this ring and was at the wrong, but or they tried stealing his car or her car if they had one. And, you know, there's so many ways you can go in this, you know, to give a scenario. And they got caught up in the wrong time, place, and got shot. Right, disposed of the bodies. One got found. Oh, they got spooked. The other one's going to get found. We got to get them out of there. Go pick up that barrel. Bring it somewhere else. Probably brought it out of state. And that's why it was never found. But all in all, you know. Arresting these two men and, you know, then letting them go because insufficient evidence. There's too many cases that have that freaking <laughs> title in it. And it's getting old and disgusting getting old and ridiculous to even read them words. Insufficient evidence. Well, then someone should have rang, rang up some more evidence to get them bastards indicted to what they needed to do. But I think, once again, this is a bad, poorly investigated operation. I don't care what anybody says. Because when stuff gets lost and stuff is found and stuff don't get put away, stuff don't get tested later on like it should be, and wait until that stuff, you know, oh, man, what the... F How many times are we going to sit here and go through this scenario? But it's sick. Till that next video, I'll see what I can come up more with this. And like I said, there is another one that has some different stuff in it, but... I think all in all, these articles do have, excuse me, just, you know, one scenario, but not enough brains to spread it out and come up with other scenarios.
But until the next video, folks, be safe, take care, and what a, <laughs> what a way to find out about another case in Indiana. And look how long this one's taken. Hmm. Is that a sign? It's going to be like that with the Delphi murders. Huh? 44 years later. Oh, man. Don't get any worse than this, folks. Out.